Hello and welcome to another Stellarian Games video. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at this. I'm calling this a walking log. It is a creature that mimics a fallen log on the forest floor, similar to like an insect, a uh, walking stick insect. But this creature is very large and it just moves along the forest floor and eats the dead material, dead trees, plants, etc. And that's how it uh, survives. This particular creature has a structure built on top of it, which um, I imagine would be from a nomadic forest uh, people that would tame these large creatures and turn them into essentially beasts of burden for them. But they would be able to move around the forest on these large creatures so that they're not stuck in one place, uh, but also have a place to live. So this one I imagine being a very large creature, kind of the center of the, the village. Others I can imagine being uh, a little bit smaller in nature and you'd actually ride them as mounts. So this video is just going to cover how you build this uh, creature, but I hope this inspires you to think about creatures, especially kind of nomadic large creatures in a, in a different way. So let's go to the table and see how it's done. Okay, to start this project, we're going to be taking two chunks of heavy aluminum wire and this wire happened to be coated, so I peeled off that coating, uh, knowing that I would have to bake this piece later on. Putting it into a vise and doing a very rough twist on the wire, and creating the, the armature for the creature itself. Then I'm adding a little bit more wire, to stiffen up the spine a little bit more, create the tail structure as well, and give the legs a little bit more strength. This creature is a little bit heavier when it's done, so it needed a little bit more strength. I'm adding some thinner wire, kind of feeding it through the twisted spine and creating just offshoots that these will be the branch mimics that are sticking off of the back of the creature that also help to support the structure of the building. I'm using some aluminum foil and crushing it around the, the body of the creature. I'm doing this to kind of bulk out the rest of the creature um, so I don't need to use as much clay at, at a later step. I was also thinking of using hot glue to coat this instead of clay. Um, I might do that as another experiment to see how that turns out. Um, I think the aluminum foil gives it a nice rough texture to begin with and then if you coated that with hot glue and give it kind of a hot glue texture I think that would work pretty well as well. But for this one I'm using clay so we're coating the entire thing in a Sculpey uh, blend. I had some Super Sculpey Firm which was much too hard to work with and I had some regular Sculpey. Uh, there is some Sculpey Medium clay that might work better but in this case I mixed together some basic white and firm to get kind of a, a medium firm texture. I'm just coating all of the surfaces by hand initially, just roughing out the, the creature's shape. Smoothing out as much of it as possible so that there isn't any obvious clay um, overlaps between where I'm, I'm adding it. Now I'm using a silicone uh, sculpting tool and just going in and giving it a, a rough uh, texture. I'm adding a little bit more clay for the mouth and adding some basic teeth underneath. I wanted this to be kind of a, a sucker fish look to it with a, a downward facing mouth. One that wouldn't be noticed if you're walking past. Um, but gave it kind of rough square teeth for just chewing up logs. Again using the sculpting tool giving it the texture of the bark. and coating pretty much the entire piece in this bark texture. Now I add a little bit more clay for the eye, kind of around the eye socket itself. And then some fine details around where the, the branch edges are. I spray painted the entire thing in flat black and now I'm coming in with a dark brown dry brush to coat the, the, the bark look. Now I'm using a variety of different browns, um, burnt umber, raw umber, and uh, raw sienna to 
coat the, the piece with varying levels of, of dry brush. I didn't want it to have just a static brown look. I wanted to have quite a dynamic look to it. The dry brushing when it was done really turned out well. I liked how it finished off. Um, and I think I might have added a little bit too much green in the final product, which you'll see, but uh, the dry brushing really did turn out well. Giving the inside of the mouth a little bit more fleshy look. And hitting those teeth with a little bit of uh, cream color. Highlighting the front horns just a little bit to show that it still has a bit of a horn look. Now I added the, the green uh, flocking to it to look like it was moss covered. Now I'm using some balsa wood strips to form the decking for that building structure that's going to sit on his back. I made it square, but I didn't really like how the square looked, so I cut them off a little bit and am trying to make it a little bit more of a curved shape. So I pinned that piece onto just a sheet of white styrofoam and then glued onto the edge uh, more balsa wood and bent it into shape and let it dry. That turned out better than I was expecting. I really like how the curved structure uh, came about. Now I'm using a very f uh, flat sheet of balsa wood and just cutting it into long strips. This will be for the decking. I'm putting a little bit of glue along the edges where the decking would be touching and just going along kind of stacking that decking into place, leaving some gaps to look like it's kind of rough hewn decking. Letting that dry. Once it's all dry, then we can come along with an X-Acto knife and cut off the excess to follow the curves. Now I'm using some more balsa wood sticks to make the framing for the top structure. Putting in a center post, hot gluing all of those onto it so that it's easy to work with. Putting in a front post and a center post as well. And then that will form the slant of the roof. These were a little bit tricky to cut along the sides. Um, you're working with a very small little surface um, and hot glue is not the most uh, finesse of glues. So it worked, uh, but it was, took a little bit to kind of get into place. Now I'm using some medium weight chipboard to form the roof. I just kind of formed it with the front arc and then bent it by hand and put a little strip of balsa wood on top. The roof is sub, uh, a separate piece so that it can be uh, taken off and you can access the interior. I'm just cutting strips into that chipboard and I'm going to use the scissors to cut off small chunks. This will be for the shingles on top of the roof. Just going along with some white glue and attaching each of the, the shingles into place. Overlapping them um, row after row. And once you reach the peak, you'll see how I do the overlap and also angle the shingles so that it matches the angle of the peak. Spray painted all of that flat black and then came along and did a dry brush of that dark brown again. This will be for the structure as well as the roof. Once that's dry, then we can come along with a lighter tan color and dry brush that on. These are some wallpaper samples or blind samples that I've gotten in the past. And I think they will work really well as kind of a, a woven or reed uh, wall structure instead of being a solid wall. I'm uh, going to use more of a basket appearance to show that it's lightweight and yet 
um, strong enough to support uh, kind of a moving, moving building. Now we need to attach this to the creature. I just simply hot glued it into place and added some hot glue underneath, um, kind of on the supporting structures. Then I'm coming in with some uh, string and kind of roping it into place to show that this structure would have to be attached to this creature in some fashion. I decided it would be uh, by rope because you can't really screw into a creature. Attaching some rope to the front and to the back. Just gluing it into place with some tacky glue. And cutting off the excess. I'm coming along with a small brush and white glue and just hitting the top of the roof and giving that a flocking coat as well. That is the final piece. Again, this is meant for a nomadic people, um, kind of a village center building. I imagine kind of market tents uh, expanding away from this as they would you know, have people come in, visit this village and then move along to the next next location. So if you like this video, uh, please hit the like button and subscribe. And if you wouldn't mind sharing it with other people to help grow this channel, that'd be fantastic. Thank you.